Okay, uh, this is going to be a double header. Ian's going to take that side, I'm going to take this. We're going to fight for 20 minutes and then that'll be it. <laughs> okay, uh, can I have the clicker? Are we ready to go? Right, um, so Herb sort of set us up here. I sort of didn't really want to do this. Ian was going to talk about some cool work that we're going to do. Um, but Herb, once I started chatting, really wanted us to sort of build on some of the stories, some of the uh, touch points the BBC's had with Thinking Digital. And it got me and Ian thinking about our journey to here, um, this place, Newcastle, Thinking Digital over the last period of time. So we've had a play on the words of sense and sensibility. I'm going to talk about our sense of self. Ian's going to talk about sense in a completely different context. And then we're just going to talk about something sensible we're doing, which Ralph announced last year. Um, OK, so. Always uh, put a funny photo of yourself up front. Uh, this is 1992. The one on the right is the youthful uh, optimist who thinks technology is going to change the world. The one on the right, uh, left, for me, is what my wife should have known she was going to marry 20 years down the line, uh, lacking in hair and slightly chubby around the uh, things. But I have, a, I have a journey back to Newcastle that started in 1986. I was very fortunate to do my degree in engineering and my PhD here, uh, and left in 94 to go to London uh, to forge a career in sort of visual effects, creative industries, and join the BBC in early 2000s. Um, Herb, as he said, we've been very supportive of Thinking Digital. I just think it's, it's my solace for learning, and it's, I'll tell you what, it's far better sitting where you are than where I'm stood. But we've, uh, we've sent speakers here, uh, we've talked about innovation, we had a very awkward presentation about the North and the BBC, which me and Ian sort of sat grimacing through uh, a few years ago. Being very honest, please don't tweet. Uh, she, may, she may still be watching. Uh, Matthew talked about the future of broadcasting, and Ralph came here and sort of talked broadly about himself and how he sees public broadcasting. It was fantastic. Um, all of them are about us making those connections with a place that I, I care very uh, passionately about and has sort of transformed in the sort of 20 years since I left. Um, Context of this is to sort of pick up on that story of the North. Now, I know there is, Salford isn't the North. It's a place quite close to where people eat prawn sandwiches to watch football, according to Roy Keane. Uh, it's not the North of England. Stuart McConey calls it the, uh, there is no one North, there just are a, a whole range of Norths. Um, but for the BBC, it was looking to build a base out of London to commit to try and reconnect with audiences that had quite openly said that it did feel it connected with, uh, and shift some of its power base, shift some of the ways in which it spends its money. Um, myself and Ian set off on that journey over five years ago. Um, Ian was already based uh, in Manchester by uh, the sort of time uh, we sort of announced that we were moving. Um, and we've sort of struff, suffered. It's, uh, it's been a fairly uphill, uh, interesting period of time. We were basically told by the external media market that it was the worst thing the BBC could possibly do. All that headline is incorrect, I should point out, but it sat there. We've, I could find another 20 or 30 online. Um, we were told more worryingly internally that it was a kiss of death to our careers, uh, that uh, we'd be back in London within three years. Um, they weren't going to build it anyway, and it was a bit stupid to go to Manchester. But we came, we've been living what I think is a responsible way of engaging with the network. I don't think we've come in and told everybody what to do. And I think the values that we believe in in doing innovation sort of are starting to ripple through and uh, to positive effect. Um, Herb said, yeah, yeah, but apply the Gartner um, hype curve, hype cycle. Yeah, peak of inflection. Truth was, there was no hype. <laughs> Uh, from our perspective, it's been just fairly uphill. It's been fairly sustained. Um, we're sort of on a slope of alignment, but actually, you know, we were told that the technology wouldn't work, the people wouldn't come, the talent wouldn't go on screen. A whole range of reasons why this was fundamentally a very bad move because the media industry needs to stay in London. And, you know, the cycles of uh, Tech City, which is phenomenal for the UK, but it needs to connect out back um, as a nationwide hub, has sort of for us as technologists and engineers thinking, oh my God, everybody else is going to London and we're going to Salford? What's, what's that all about? So it did get built, um, pretty good. It's quite a good place to work. The community, the culture is pretty good. It delivered on time. It's a whole range of uh, promising starts around better reflection of the, the regions of the North, content coming from different areas. Uh, for me, the sort of mix and diversity, the shakeup of moving people out of London means you actually got about 60% new people in. So the, the whole, what I would call a northern soul of engineering is starting to take place. There's a sort of sense that you don't have to have gone to certain schools in order to work at the BBC. And that's got, got to be a good thing. Uh, 
thinking about my world and the world of digital. This is the, this is the corporate one. Six of these 10 bubbles, the products from the Future Media BBC Online are built out of Manchester. All of the connected red buttons, the iPlayer, the, the mobile and uh, connected TVs are all built out of Manchester. Um, all of the sport apps, the Digital Olympics was all delivered through the infrastructure around the Olympics. These are sort of starting to chip away at the negative headlines. It become very hard to be so critical when high quality work's being done. Again, from a workforce that was only 33% moved. Um, Anytime you're using the iPlayer, which most people do use uh, on any device other than a desktop, it's coming out of an engineering base three floors down from me. And we launched this, uh, the new connected red button again from engineering colleagues. Fantastic. The group that I lead, we do R&D, is based within that space. And we even made my dad happy. I got a proper newspaper headline in the Daily Mail, which wasn't critical about what I did. Uh, we, we're very strong on access services, accessibility. We had a, an industrial trainee project uh, from a student from Manchester. He managed to actually basically invent connected toys. And we have Daleks that run around being controlled by live television. Um, we don't do toys, but we got headlines which, again, there's no bad words about me in that, so I was quite pleased. Um, which brings us to sort of two years down the line. We've just celebrated our second birthday. Uh, Financial Times, I was hoping to have the big, nice screen that's given us our headline. Um, reality was, at 1432, that was the best headline the Financial Times gave, which is radically brilliant. But by 1734, good news doesn't sell. Um, <laughs> so we, we, the story has been slightly shifted. Um, which sort of hampers my presentation, but we're in quite a healthy position. It's a promising start. The National Audit Office gave its two-year report. We broadly were on time. We never lost broadcast. Uh, the money is coming in under budget, but it's got a long way to go. It's a 20-year plan. I'm going to shift now um, to get quite personal with our journey within um, Media City. The other point is me and Ian haven't been made redundant. We haven't been forced back to London, um, and we're quite happy, I believe. Um, yeah. 2010, you'd be quite conscious we didn't have a speaker here. Ian was due to be do it, running a session. Um, unfortunately for Ian and for the people around him, he got very ill, um, pretty critically ill, I think, if we're very honest. Um, and Herb, sorry, to his credit, um, did a call out in this space. And um, it was life and death threatening. If you want to know more, uh, God, if you really want to know more, watch Ian's TEDx talk from Manchester, uh, my, slash my brush with death. Is yeah. that what we'll go with? Yeah. Um, it's pretty, pretty cut, pretty raw. Um, but he's really healthy now. He's been back in the business and, um, I'm going to hand over to him and he's going to talk about something far more interesting, far more exciting about our work. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Does this work? Okay, yeah. okay. So I've been working on this technology as part of BBC R&D and under Adrian um, called Perceptive Media. I want to just take a step back. So think about how we used to tell stories. So I'm looking at you guys right now. I'm looking at this side. I'm looking at everyone looks pretty, you know, awake. Coffee is kind of brewing. This side, a little bit less, kind of more looking at the iPads and that kind of thing. And so I would tell a slightly different story to you to you, you know, and that's that's how we used to tell stories around the campfire. We used to tell the stories based on who was actually in the room. I call this, or we call this, perceptive media. We called it perceptive media. Um, here's a rough outline of what it is. But if you think about broadcast, broadcast is what we do. It's what the BBC does. Um, broadcast is great. You get to hit everybody with the same message, but you miss that those subtleness. So if you are not actually paying attention, or you guys are really paying attention, then the, the message should be slightly different. Because, you know, that's what humans do. This is what you know, this is what I do. So I'm looking at you guys right now and I'm trying to decide, okay, what's my next words? What's the words that are actually gonna make you kind of wake up or make you do or kind of take this all in? And that's what it's about. So we missed, we, 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 we kind of lost the, the context, the mood, the body language, and a whole bunch of other stuff when we went to broadcast. Yes, you got to hit everyone with the same message, but uh, we missed all this stuff. Not only that, um, we, we, yeah, we, missed, yeah, we missed all that, and we also missed the fact that you could actually, 
You know, it's what we normally do. We, the, the narrative has all the variables. And a variable is not the right word, but a kind of as a programmer kind of person, that's how I think. And so if I was a comedian, I would say, hello, Newcastle, or, or oh, sorry, hello, Gateshead, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see. Yeah, exactly. So you can really see, and that's what you, you know, that's what you, that's the way you kind of think about things. Um, also, the explicit, well, you know, explicit is very much about kind of like typing stuff in or projecting something. So you type something into Twitter, you know, then you read that. And that, there's a, that's a lot of value to that, but it's the implicit. It's the, you know, the example is you can see as humans, we know what that woman's feeling. You know, we can get a feel for just looking at her. We know that she's feeling uncomfortable. There's something there. You know, if you're going to tell someone a story and they're kind of like this, then there's something, there's something happening. And we're missing that when we tell stories through broadcasts. So we did a project, uh, a demo called um, Perceptive Media, uh, Breaking Out. Um, and unfortunately, it's, a, it's kind of a 10 minute piece, so I can't play the whole thing. But if we can play the audio, then he'll show you some little bits where the narrative changes. So you can play the audio, please. I've got a phone. Missing out on all of Newcastle upon time. I've got a window. On a beautiful morning like this. It was not that great. And all because you cannot get through 10 minutes of panic. You've no idea what this is like. I have got my ups and downs. If you felt the fear I did when you tried to go to the ground floor. I would rise above it. No, you'd be just like me. Stuck. It's not my fault. That doesn't mean you don't have a choice. You could do anything. Anything? You could go to the message. Wow, inspiring. I've got a phone! Missing out on all of that. I've got a window! 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 It mentioned Newcastle, and then it mentioned Gates. Um, sorry, and then it mentioned the Sage, and in the second one in Manchester, it will mention Manchester, and it will talk about I think the print works, and I think the third one, weirdly enough, um, it mentions uh, es not Essex, um, Exeter. Exeter, and something, some area in Exeter, and that's what I mean by the variables. We can slot in this stuff in um, based on where your location is. So. Um, you can listen to it yourself at futurebroadcast.com and also we're doing a session at lunchtime which um, I'd urge you guys to come to. Not only because of you can hear the, the whole play and actually ask questions because there's always a million questions about this stuff, but also because we did some research uh, as we do um, and this is one of the biggest questions is that do I need a laptop to listen to this? Yes, you do. But... Imagine if there was a radio, and a radio could perceive who or what you're doing, the context, all that kind of stuff. Well, <laughs> we created it. This is the very first perceptive radio, as far as we know, in the world. This radio will perceive what you're doing, and it will use that to change the, the narrative of what's happening. If you would like to listen to it, then uh, come to our lunchtime session. So yeah, it's about perceiving the audience, it's about understanding you know, what you guys are up to, are you falling asleep, that kind of thing. And the whole thing will be open hardware, open code. There'll be more details about this soon, so look out for that soon. And I think that's me done. Oh, thank you very much to Mudlark, MCQN, and Happy Worm. And also, this is also part of BBC R&D audio team. Thank you. Right to me, then. Yeah. So I think it's, it's worth noting the, the whole idea that the, the narrative builds up. It's a shame the, the audio didn't quite work. You got it, start to see that all the variables around time of day, the weather, um, the different locations. Social and it's sort of, for, for quite a large amount of the audience, say if you live in Manchester or you live in London, you probably wouldn't notice. But if you live in Grimsby and it starts telling you and the story characters are talking to pl about places very close to you, you start to have far different resonance. Okay, final bit. Um, last year, Ralph came. By all accounts, 
he was Ralph. He does the thing <laughs> that uh, makes him quite an impressive boss to, to be around. Um, but he talked about connected storytelling. He talked about the future of um, the sort of new ways in which we engage. And we do work within our BBC R&D and, and BBC itself lo is always looking at how it's tells story. He wanted to launch an innovation programme. This is my the sort of sensibility bit is if you're going to do innovation and come up with new ideas, um, the old way would be to do it locked away in a lab in, in, in sort of deepest countryside. And the new way and the right way is to think about collaboration and partnership. And so basically for the last year, I, as a second role, have been head of uh, Connected Studio and will be going forward looking at running and setting up an innovation program where the BBC started to build uh, a better way of engaging with third parties, freelancers, inventors uh, around this sort of world of uh, new storytelling. So I'm going to show you, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have ever heard of Connected Studio or had a chance to come along. Um, I'm going to talk at, just briefly at the end about an opportunity uh, for more of you guys in the Northeast to get involved. Um, but I'm going to show you a very short one minute video that just gives you a flavour uh, of the experience. Are you okay, Laura? <laughs> So it only gives a flavour. Um, there's a taster session uh, running at lunchtime. It's obviously quite a bit late, so I'm going to now really speed up. Um, where we're doing a, a, an hour with your lunch. You can come and it's around CBBC and some of our sort of connected storytelling. Um, it, during the year, Ralph said he wanted to do this. We've worked with BBC Online, all of the sort of major things like iPlayer, Sport, CBBC Children's, but also the homepage, weather and travel. We've run 18 events. There's been a 1,000 people participated, 193 companies. We've heard 251 ideas. We publish a public open brief. Everything is open. We share our expertise. We make it simple. We do the basics. This has been sensible. We pay people on time. We are honest with the IPR. We don't seek to cover all the ideas. Um, 76 of those have come back and done two-day hack days, really intense working with our technical leads and our design leads and editorial leads. And then currently we've got 27 pilots in certain f levels of testing. The BBC homepage now one is live. First time ever we've put something up almost in alpha and I was inspired by the GDS talk earlier. It's a sort of blueprint for how I think the BBC is going to need to evolve. Um, we've got all of these ideas flowing around and we've got about six or seven that will make it through at scaled into the real live BBC audience. Um, and what it leaves us is with this really simple point that we've got, we've done something really basic and obvious that if you're a content and media and technology company, you don't want to do everything in-house. You need to start shifting and opening the doors. It's why we came to Thinking Digital in the first place, because it was about engaging with that. So sort of three big simple calls is come for lunch, uh, network, meet the team, get an experience. We want more companies from the Northeast. We've had companies from Plymouth, Belfast, Cardiff, Edinburgh, uh, Brighton, London, Birmingham, Newcastle, Middlesbrough, Sunderland. We'd, I'm not quite sure why we're not hitting, but we want more of you. We're going to be running new calls. 
Very specifically, July the 4th, Commonwealth Games, BBC and the Commonwealth Games are going to run a collective studio in Glasgow looking at the sort of cultural impact of, the, of something like that that's going to happen next year. Um, we're going to be doing more calls um, throughout the year and we're really keen that the North East comes and works with us um, and lets us know what it needs to get more involved. So, 10 seconds to go. Oof, pretty good. Um, comes back to this really fantastic image. Um, talks about, I love this quote because it's about collaboration, it's about partnership, and I just think it's just the right principle in most industries, but in the, in the oh, the red flash, okay, that's good. Um, in the world of digital going into the 21st century, it seems the right way to do stuff, if not the only way. Um, the background image was taken back in March, uh, Future Everything uh, supported NVA and uh, Key Culture to run the sort of speed of light, and I encourage you to go online and, and find video. If you find a video that was done with Blue Peter, some of our R&D technology was used alongside the artists and uh, creates these amazing visuals, and I think that, for me, is sort of two years down the line in terms of Media City, five years down the line for uh, me and Ian coming to the, the sort of, at leaving London, I don't feel that, I feel we've just got a good promising start. I'd like to come back in about five years' time if Herb's still prepared to ask us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.